Hello guys, my name is SVB and I'm back with another video and you guys will notice I've been gone for a while and that's because I've been busy but also I've been conducting something of a social experiment not anything like what happened in Overwatch Contenders with Punisher and Ellie, don't worry. So let me make clear what the purpose of this video is and what I've been doing for the last couple weeks. So to explain context for any of you who've not seen any of my videos before, I am a GM slash high master level player. That's where my main account is at. Uh, and I have been top 500 before, but mostly I play tank, main tank, um, and also a bit of support. Now, recently I went and bought a, another account since the Blizzard sale was going on and Overwatch was very cheap. And the purpose of this buying, buying of this account was that I wanted to practice DPS. Uh, just because with all the guides I make, it's, it's helpful to understand a role when I'm helping other people and, you know, helping them with their positioning and stuff. It's one thing to know what to do, it's another thing to have gone and experienced it. Uh, and, the other, and the other purpose of making this account was just to see what it is like at the lower elos because I've seen a lot of discussion on places like Reddit, um, Overwatch, Competitive Overwatch, R, R Overwatch University, R Overwatch, where I've seen some responses to videos, to posts, some advice, some VOD reviews that, you know, what goes on in the pro scene is one thing but gold and plat is like a whole nother world and I've seen a lot of people complain that, you know, some certain advice, it, it's all great in theory but in gold and plat it goes out the window and so I wanted to, I knew the game was going to put me at a lower elo at least, you know, at, at a highest it was going to put me a diamond um, so I knew I was going to get to experience some of the lower elos and I just wanted to see what it was like. So I played my placements. I, you know, I played it genuinely as hard as I could do, as as well as I could do with DPS. Obviously, bear in mind I'm not a good DPS. I haven't spent a lot of time. In fact, I've never played DPS on any of my other ac accounts at, at competitive level before. So this is my first foray into playing competitive DPS, uh, and the game decided that I was a gold level player. Fair enough. I'm not the best DPS. Eventually, I climbed to Platinum fairly quickly, obviously the game, um, I know a lot of you are worried about smurfs coming in and ruining the game, but again, the, the game pushes you out of gold very, very quickly, so even though I did place into gold, I, 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 pushed, I was pushed out of gold into plat very quickly, um, and hopefully I'll, I'll keep climbing as I improve as a DPS, but while I was there, while I was in gold, I learned a lot of valuable lessons, guys, um, and I, again, I wasn't there to stomp on noobs. I genuinely played as hard as I could and the game put me in gold and while I was there I learned a lot of lessons that I want to share with you guys because I think it will be very interesting and very helpful for those of you who are at that elo who do finding frustrating because believe me it is a bit, I, I understand fully now how frustrating an experience it is to be in gold how messy things are how uncoordinated things are and I think the lessons I've learned can really help you guys because now you know you'll get the perspective of someone who's played at two, two you know starkly different elos and somebody who can maybe help you out with a little bit of advice and a little bit of tips of, of what's going wrong, what's going on in gold, and how we can try and fix that. Let's get into it, guys. So I decided to split this video into two parts because there's a lot I want to cover. And there, like I said, there's a lot I learned, um, and I and I want to focus on two different things. So this this video is going to cover what what every role is doing wrong. Because quite quickly when I got into the games, I started to notice that everybody's mentality of the game and th their understanding of their role is very very different to what it should be and hopefully by trying to explain some of the I, I would say false ideas that have creeped into gold and platinum level we can hold you know we can hopefully improve the improve the general play and hopefully you guys will see an improvement because I fully understand how frustrating it is for those of you who are watching the guide videos watching the vlog videos watching the pro play because Anyone who's watching a video to try and improve themselves on YouTube, try and improve their Overwatch play, is probably above average, or at least has an above average understanding of the game because they're trying to understand the tactics. Whereas a lot of people, they go into the game and fair enough, maybe you know Overwatch isn't the biggest deal to them, they just play for fun. That's totally cool. But when that happens, you get a bunch of people playing the game without really knowing what their role is supposed to do. So in this video, I want to cover what each of the roles are doing wrong. Uh, and some of the misunderstandings I encountered when I was in gold, some of the discussions I had with other players, uh, where it just seemed like they didn't really understand what their role was supposed to do. So we'll try and clear that up. And in the next video, I'll talk about some general things that 
can be improved at a level and what a lot of gold players and platinum players that I saw were doing wrong or what they understood was wrong because I think that's the most important thing uh, you know again I'll never bash anybody for having bad aim or bad technical ability but if you care about the game uh, and you want to play it competitively then you should understand the game and there's no excuse for not understanding the game better when there's so many resources out there so let's try and right some of these wrongs guys let's try and fix some of these issues so I'm going to start with tank the role I know best um, and I think is also probably the role that is most incorrectly played at that elo now for those of you that don't know um, the lowest count of players at, at any role is a tank um, and you said something you really realize uh, when you start playing a lot more games is that tanks and particularly main tanks are a real real shortage in overwatch and the good main tank players will climb ladder very very fast because there's, there's just not enough of them and so when you do get one in your team it makes a big big difference so one of the first things I noticed while playing in this elo is that nobody seems to want to play main tank and again I understand how frustrating it is to play main tank if your team isn't coordinating with you and there is a lot of um, miscoordination and uncoordinated play at gold and plat level is what I found the first off um, people if you if you are somebody who wants to play tank and to be honest if you're somebody who really cares about climbing main tank is really really important guys it's a really important role to have if you if you do the right things more often than not you're gonna make uh, you're gonna make a difference for your team and you'll see that in your SR climb because you will climb a lot faster than say a DPS when there's a lot of DPS and anytime you go and pick DPS in a game you have to compete with maybe two or three other people who want to pick DPS as well whereas if you pick main tank because you're very unlikely to encounter another main tank main in any game um, you're gonna occupy a role that your team needs and you're gonna make a visible difference on the game now speaking of which the thing I realized though is that 90% of the main tanks or just tanks in general didn't understand what the role of a tank is and I want to make that clear now because it seems like there was a lot of confusion and I'll explain what that role is with a little bit of an anecdote so I was I was on horizon lunar colony we were attacking uh, the point A and we were just stuck at the choke nobody seemed to be going in uh, you know we we're just all poking and inevitably the you know some somebody says oh DPS aren't doing their job what I said was look you need to go in the tanks need to go in we're just standing in the choke you guys need to go in and make space now for those of you that don't know that is the fundamental job of tanks is to make space and I'll explain what that means in a minute but the the person who started the uh, DPS aren't doing their job flaming session they replied saying no DPS is supposed to create space for tanks now even though that was the only physical time someone said that to me out loud it's clear once I heard that 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 was how the majority of tanks in gold were playing now let me clear that up unequivocally guys that is absolutely wrong 100 200 300 percent wrong that could not be more wrong if, if it was the job of DPS to make space for tanks then I don't know what tanks would even do in overwatch because if, 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 if DPS was supposed to make space and get kills and clean up fights then tanks would essentially just be a body to put on a point and in which case they could, they could just be Bob Bob would do the, to the job of a tank if that's all that they did as a tank your number one job is to dedicate your life to making the DPS's life easier and you do this by taking space now what that means is you have to occupy certain areas which make room for your team to come in and occupy after you because as a tank you're gonna draw a lot of attention you're you know a big body large HP pool and if you're a Reinhardt for example you have this big shield that blocks your you know blocks damage for your teammates same goes for Winston if you jump in on top of somebody uh, and you put a bubble around them or you just start zapping them that is really really hard to ignore like if you drop if you jump the back line they have to turn and do something about you because you're this gigantic monkey tasering them in the face so when you jump in as a Winston or as Reinhardt when you walk forward with your shield and you occupy a certain area of the map you allow your DPS and your healers to come forward and take that aggressive position and you allow them to get better angles for example if you're playing with a Widowmaker and you're stood at a choke point and I think the best best example for this guys is Hanamura point A because I played this map a few times while I was while I was playing DPS in gold and almost every time without fail 
my team would sit at the choke, those wooden arches at the front, and that was it. They just hold their shield up and take infinite amounts of poke. But if you do that guys, what happens is, your Widowmaker has absolutely no angles to take from that point on. She can hook shot to the window, she can hook shot to the balcony, and that's that's about it. Beyond that, she has to go on a wild flank, and you really shouldn't be asking your Widowmaker to, to basically open the fight for you. You have to open the fight for the Widowmaker. And you do this by walking forwards into the fight, getting in the enemy's face. And when you take their attention away, that allows your Widowmaker or another GPS, that allows them the time to take their, take their shot, take their aim, and properly connect with their shots. Instead, if you stand at the choke and you force them to just take unfavorable angles, they're going to be pressured, they're going to get spam coming their way, they're going to find it really, really hard to get a shot off clean. And if they can't get a shot off clean, they're going to find it harder to kill people. And you need them to kill people to actually win the fight. So if you're somebody who's playing tank, and particularly if you're playing main tank, it's your job to jump in, even if it means you die. Now, that doesn't mean you have license to just throw your body and, and die repeatedly because at that point you are feeding. But if you are unsure, it's better at, at that it's better at a lower elo to err on the side of aggression than to err on the side of passivity. You may jump in and die, or you may charge in and die, but even your death isn't actually necessarily mean the end of the fight provided you made space for your team if you if you created enough distraction if you occupied enough real estate to allow your team to come in for your dps to come in and take the angles they want to take then you've done your job as a tank whether you're alive or dead preferably you're alive and this is where you really start to differentiate the good main tanks from the bad main tanks the bad main tanks will come in and and they'll throw themselves forward and they'll die and maybe their team capitalizes off the space they've made, maybe they don't. The good main tanks will find a way to get in the enemy's face, pressure them, occupy their attention, you know, take distract them from the DPS, but then also get out. And you gotta remember guys, that as a tank, your currency is your health pool, essentially. You trade your health for space. So it's okay for you to take damage. It's okay for you to go down to low HP, because that's what you're supposed to do. That's what your job is as a tank, is to go in and tank damage. That's where the name comes from. You're supposed to tank damage for your team. If you stand at the choke, holding your shield up, or just poking aimlessly back and forth, and you're waiting for your DPS to start the fight, you're doing it wrong. So I just wanted to make that clear, guys. For everybody who's who's playing tank, first of all, I, I really recommend if you are somebody who, who's open to the idea of playing tank, learn main tank if you want to climb your, your SR, because there's just not enough main tanks playing uh, at any rank in Overwatch, but particularly at the lower elos. So you will climb if you learn how to play main tank. And the way you do that is by making space. Go in, be aggressive guys, and communicate to your team. That's the most important thing as a main tank, is to communicate to your team. And don't be afraid to trade your health for a bit of a bit of space, even if it means you die at the end of the day. Like I said, don't go, go, don't go throwing guys, don't go feeding the enemy. But it's okay to die as a main tank. It's better to be aggressive than to just sit there and do nothing because if you do nothing nothing will happen that's your job as a main tank if nothing is happening it's your fault as a main tank it's not the dps's fault moving on to healers guys what i actually realized that a lot of healers are doing at that rank is something that i, I actually re it really surprised me because i thought it would be the other way around so one of the myths about healers in general is that you would think that the higher you go the more healers start to dps right because theoretically the higher you go the more technically skilled the players are so you would you would imagine that the higher you go the more likely you're going to see an ana start fra like trying to frag out ignoring her team to try and snipe the enemy enemy ana or a widowmaker or a far or something and same goes for like a moira you would expect you'd see a dps moira in the back line or a zen on a flank the flank yada you would think that that's how logic would follow but having played at gold and platinum now i understand that it's actually the complete complete opposite and this was again something that really surprised me. But what I realized is that way, way, way too many healers at Gold and Platinum were trying to do the job with the DPS. They were trying to make kills happen themselves. Now, I imagine this comes out of a frustration because they've, they've played in many games where they feel like nothing is happening because maybe, like I said, the main tanks aren't doing their job or they feel like kills just aren't coming and they feel like their DPS are shit or the DPS aren't doing their job. And so I think a lot of a lot of the healers out there have learned to take matters into their own hands, and they've started, you know, going for the kills, going for the kills hard. And there were two very um, 
clear heroes where I saw this error happen more, more often than others. Now those were Mercy and Moira. Now the Moira is unsurprising probably because Moira is one hero who legitimately can get all five gold medals. Now you might say that if, if as Moira you went and got all five gold medals that you did your job and therefore it was the rest of your team's fault. But I'm going to try and patiently explain to you guys that that's also a wrong and flawed mentality. And if you bear with me because I know that might anger some of you but just bear with me while I try to explain to you why it isn't good. Now first of all because you, just because you have the gold healing medal does not mean you healed as much as you could do. Now again, that's that's one of those things where it's like a false logic. You would think if you had gold healing that therefore you've justified your actions as a healer. But in reality, when you get gold healing, you're only competing with one other healer maximum, potentially. Unless your team is running triple support. But it's very unlikely. I didn't see a lot of that. Playing someone like Moira. Moira is a main healer. She does more healing than most of the other healers in the game. So... By default, you're expected to have gold healing. And just because you out heal the other support on your team doesn't necessarily mean that you were doing as much healing as you should have been doing. For example, if you play Moira alongside a Lucio, the Lucio may have spent a lot of his time speeding the team around. And now that, that can be a very, very good play. Speeding your team around and you know allowing them to get into positions quicker and get into the enemy's face quicker can have huge impact that doesn't come through in the metal statistics. You just don't see it, it, it won't come up anywhere and the Lucio may have silver healing. That doesn't mean that you as Moira have done your job. And what I noticed was a lot of Moira's wraithing into the back line, one on one in the enemy, enemy healers or an enemy DPS. And again, you might say that you, if you get a kill, then you've done your job. But the problem is guys, that, that isn't your job as a healer. Your job isn't to get kills. The reason you set up a 2-2-2 comp is that you want two people whose role is to DPS, two people whose role is to tank, and two people whose role is to heal. Now if you decide as a Moira to go DPS or as any healer, if you decide to go DPS, you, you throw that balance off. Even for however long you're doing it, you throw that balance so that your team is now playing with three DPS, two tanks, and one healer. And as Moira, you're very self-sufficient. You can self-heal with your right click and you can also orb to save yourself. So you're not going to die very often because you can always wraith out if in absolute trouble you can always wraith out. But somebody like a McCree, a Widowmaker, even a Genji who, who doesn't have any backup is going to die very very quickly. So if your DPS are playing one of these heroes who aren't self-sufficient and almost no hero in the game is as self-sufficient as Moira. So your DPS are not as self-sufficient as you. They need your help to stay alive and therefore get kills. So if you wraith into the backline and you start DPSing, of course you're going to out DPS them because they're going to die very very quickly. They're not as self-sufficient as you. So you might, you might do 200 damage that leads to nothing, whereas they do 50 damage and die. So of course you're going to keep the gold healing medal and now you're going to out DPS your DPS. But at the end of the day, it's, 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 they're the ones better equipped to kill people. Moira is not very good at killing people, at finishing people off. She's good at doing little bits of poke damage. And sure, if you throw an orb at a low target, it'll finish them off. But a Genji is so much better. A Tracer is so much better. A Doomfist is so much better. So by enabling your DPS to get kills, to do damage, you allow for your team as a whole to do a lot more work. Not to mention the fact that even if you get one kill, but you spent that time DPSing and then one of your DPS dies, you've negated that one for one kill that you made. Whereas it would be much better if you'd kept your DPS alive and allowed them to get that one kill. And then you've got a 6v5 situation. And this again applies to the other example that I noticed. Which is that I saw that almost every Mercy that I encountered in, in, in Gold and Platinum used their Valkyrie to, to pull their blaster out and start trying to get kills. Now I remember a while back I was on Reddit again um, and I saw a discussion and somebody in fact commented this on one of my posts as well asking if it was a good idea to pretty much always use Valkyrie as a means of getting kills. Um, because this person said that when they Valk, they can almost always get at least two, sometimes three kills. Um, so they were wondering if it was worth, and they, they it seems to suggest that they did feel like it was it was worthwhile, it was valuable to use Valkyrie as a primarily blaster killing DPS tool. Now, as with most things in Overwatch, whether or not this is a good decision is highly, highly contextual. It really, really depends on the situation. But let me explain to you guys the ways in which pulling out your blaster and trying to kill people while in Valk 
is, is not always a good idea and it's, it's a more it's a deceptively bad idea and I would suggest that most of the time it's a bad idea and let me explain why now as I just said when you start a game and you go with a 2-2-2 comp which is the theoretically optimal comp we're putting goats aside for a minute because that's a a fad I guess you could say and it may well be gone soon but ideally the comp is 2-2-2 and with that 2-2-2 not only is there the balance of who's healing, who's damaging, and who's tanking, there's also a balance of the types of ults that you have. So tank ults are generally good, again, at either creating space, or taking space, or stalling. DPS ults are almost always good at killing. Port ults are good at supporting. They're good at, they, you know, Lucio and Zen's ult will pretty much make your team immortal for a little bit of time. And... Ana is again is now in the new version is heal as well as a damage buff and reduction. Coalescence obviously heals and damages. And then we've got Valkyrie, which has the potential to heal multiple targets at the same time, which Mercy can't do ordinarily, and also damage boost multiple people at the same time. So if you start a game with 2-2-2, the balance is that you have two ults that are supposed to support you, that are supposed to keep the team alive. And that's where Valkyrie can be amazing because the ability to chain heal your team and also to chain, dam chain damage boost them to you know flick between the two whenever you need to give all your teammates 30% plus damage is huge if you can do it. Similarly healing your team with the mercy beam you know all at the same time is a huge 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 buff to your team. If you decide to pull your blaster out and just Valkyrie you've now essentially traded a support ult for a DPS ult and a not a very good DPS ult. Because when you're thinking about value guys, you always have to think about value in context. Value in the context of what value could another hero provide you in the same situation. So for example, if you were going to use Valkyrie just to blast her DPS kill people, you may as well just have had a Genji Blade instead, which is much, much more likely to kill people and much easier to kill people with. And alternatively, think about it this way, is that if you didn't have Valkyrie and instead you had a Zenyatta and you had a Transcendence, and that ability to keep your team alive, basically immortal for 6 seconds or whatever it is that Zen's transcendence lasts. You're trading that potential ability to swing a fight in that huge way. And you're trading it for the possibility that you frag out with, a, with your blaster and get 2 or 3 kills. And here's the other part of the Valkyrie fallacy, as I would like to call it. Is that you pretty much have to get two kills to justify blastering with your with your Valkyrie at least and here's why because again while you for that duration of time that you pull your pistol out and you start chasing a Widowmaker or an enemy support or even a Winston or something for that duration of time your comp is now suddenly three DPS you're down a healer because one of your healers is not healing anymore so for every second you, you spend blastering, you're increasing the likelihood that one of your teammates dies from a lack of healing. So if you pull your blaster out and get one kill, you, you've probably done a bad trade if anything because you've not only used an ult, but one of your teammates almost certainly will die while you're not healing them. And even two kills quite often may not be a valuable trade if you're not healing your team because maybe two of your teammates will die. Again, it depends on context. But now you got to think about it the other way. If you had spent that time healing and damage boosting your team, and remember guys, that's a huge, huge damage boost if you can get three, four, five of your teammates in that damage boost. And if they got two and three kills because of your damage boost, you've achieved, this, you've achieved the same as you would have done pulling your blaster out and solo killing those two or three people, as you would have done now having kept your team alive and allowed them to get the kills. Now I understand why people do the blaster Valkyrie, because it feels good and it's a very direct impact that you can make on the game. You pull your blaster out, you kill two people, you can see them die. You feel like you've done your job and you feel really good about yourself. But the true support and the really good support player recognizes that it's not about them getting the kills. It's just about the team getting the kills and the team staying alive. And the best way for the team to succeed is for you to enable them with your ultimate. For you to keep them alive, for you to damage boost them. Because it's much better if your team comes comes out of a fight, all six of them alive and the entire enemy team dead, rather than you blastering, killing three people, leaving three people on, enemy, on the enemy team, but now two of your teammates have died and you're down to four. And then again, you're still scrapping it out. So again, guys, I'm not saying you never, never use blasters, Valkyrie, because there are sometimes, 
and I covered this in my Versi video, when, when are the good times to use your blaster. But Valking just exclusively to blaster is, is, is a deceptively bad idea. It's a trap that you get caught into because it feels good to get those kills directly, but you're not actually necessarily doing the best thing for your team. And I think this sums up what I, what I noticed amongst a lot of the support players is that they're obviously frustrated with the level of DPS players that they, they're being put with and they feel like they're not doing their job enough. So I noticed a lot, a lot of supports were quite frequently trying to just go for kills. They were ignoring their team. Uh, Mercy's pulling out their blasters. Zen's on a flank. Lucio's doing the wall ride boop Lucio thing. And Moira's going in the back line trying to duel people. It's really not a good idea, guys, because while it might feel good to get a kill and then it allows you to flame your DPS for not doing their job, in reality, your job is not to get kills. Your job is to enable your DPS to get kills and maybe even your tanks to get kills. If you keep them alive and then they do nothing, then they've not done their job. But if you get kills and then say, You're, the DPS are shit, I've got the gold medals or I'm getting the kills, the DPS aren't doing anything, then you're not doing their job. You're trying to take their job from them and you're just making the entire team that much less efficient. And finally, moving on to the role in question, which is DPS, which is what I've been playing a fair amount of for the last couple of weeks. Now I saved this for last deliberately because you might think that I'm going to come out in support of DPSs having played as one for a while. And I am in some ways, I do have sympathy for DPSs in some ways, having gotten a flavor for what it's like at that elo. Um, and I have two areas of, of complaint. One is with the entire solo queue system. And what I've realized is that solo queue basically breeds a particular fault in DPS that I have seen not just at Gold and Plat, but I've seen this at the highest levels of play. I've seen this at Master GM level players making this mistake. To be honest, it is the mistake that I've seen most often amongst, amongst any role at any level, is that DPS try to do the whole game on their own. They try to carry the whole game on their own. They never play with their teammates. They don't want anything to do with them. And this is what I've noticed cost more games than most things. It's probably the singular biggest problem in Overwatch that, that causes games to, to go badly is, is when your DPS don't coordinate, it, it breeds through the whole team and nobody ends up coordinating because if one guy is going in at one time, you know, the rest of the team isn't there or they're, they're forced to take a quick and bad engagement or they don't fight at all and that guy dies on their own. They flame their team for not coming in with them. It breeds a horrible environment. But what I also learned was that that's what the solo queue environment essentially asks of them. So that's where I have sympathy for them because I realized playing DPS and having played DPS with tanks who are super, super passive, who never do anything. And when the entire rank, you know, the gold and platinum rank seem to have an understanding that it's the job of DPS to start the fight. It's the job of DPS to make space. I understand the frustration of why DPS learn to ignore their team. At the end of the day, if something goes wrong or if the game goes wrong, uh, it was always till DPS time. It was always blame the DPS, it's the DPS's fault, they didn't get kills. And that's a very simplistic understanding of Overwatch, guys. Just because you didn't get kills doesn't mean that the DPS didn't do their job. It might also, it could have been, it could have been that the DPS didn't do their job. But what's more likely happened is that your team didn't engage properly. They didn't start a fight. They never started a fight allowing the DPS the space and time and the chaos because DPS sometimes need chaos to actually go in and get kills, to actually go in and do damage. If you stand aimlessly around and do nothing, of course your DPS are going to do nothing. And so what that mentality breeds in DPS is that they learn to ignore their team because they're not going to get any support from their team. And that's what happens when you have supports who are DPSing and tanks who aren't jumping in and supports who aren't supporting and healing you. Is that as a DPS, you learn that you're going to have to go play on a solo flank mission and just try and do everything on your own. And eventually, these DPS players, they get good enough at doing that. They get good enough at picking Tracer, you know, sneaking into the back line, just going for, a, a, you know, a crazy 3k. And if they pull it off consistently enough, they start to climb. You ask that same Tracer to save their Pulse Bomb for a Graviton to get a free six-man kill. They won't do it because they're so used to playing the solo game that they just learn to ignore their teammates. And that's what I've noticed. It seems to be a problem amongst DPS players, particularly at Gold and Platinum, where they're not even slightly trying. But it's a mentality that I've noticed DPS players at even higher ELOs find hard to let go of. And 
having read what some coaches and contenders team staff have said about training players and, and what, what problems they often come across, the number one problem that coaches seem to cite as DPS doing wrong is that they always, always try and take the, carry the game on their back. They try and do everything on their own. And that's something that you have to get out of the habit of doing, guys. And that might even mean not playing solo queue so much, learning to play with your friends, finding people, whether it be through the group find or just naturally in the game, who you can trust, who you can play with. So if you're a DPS, finding tanks and healers who you know you can play with, who will make space for you, who will enable you. Because at the moment, the whole solo flank, I am the best player, I will do everything, and you guys suck, and you guys are in my way, it makes a horrible, horrible game environment, guys. Because when you are playing main tank, and when you are trying to coordinate, and your DPS aren't, aren't going in when you tell them to, they aren't following in with you, they're not coming back, they're always trickling in. That's the one thing I noticed DPS were most guilty of. They were always trickling in. They would always die late because they were tr too busy trying to get kills even after the fight was clearly over. And then they'll get two kills when everybody else is already dead. And they'll say, well, where was my team? My team didn't do anything. I got two kills. Where are you guys? But of course, kills are meaningless if they're not at the right time. If you don't get a kill when your team can capitalize on it, then it's pointless. So that's partly why I made this video because I wanted to try and change some of the mentalities that I encountered while playing at that elo and it seems to be a sort of chicken and egg situation of each role was doing things that made it harder for the other roles to thrive and we really need to change our understanding of what each role is supposed to do so we can all help each other so that we all enter a game of overwatch and it feels fun it feels good because we're coordinating and because everybody's trying to do the right things even if we don't always do them even if we don't always manage to execute I'm sure all of you have been in games where it was really close, it was really fun, everybody was talking, everybody's coordinating. And even when you lose, it doesn't feel bad because you've had, a, you've had a good shot, you've had a good try at it. But nothing feels worse than a game where you go in and nobody wants to help you. Nobody wants to do anything together. One person's doing one thing, another person's doing another thing. Someone's flaming someone, someone's blaming someone else. Those are always the worst games and those are the games that make Overwatch feel like a struggle. And these things happen because we aren't trying to do each, our roles and we're all trying to infringe on each other's roles. So as tanks, you need, to, you need to enable your DPS. You need to do your job and that's to make their life easier. You got to make space for them and that means trading your body, putting your body on the line. As healers, you need to stop trying to, trying to do the DPS's job. Heal them, enable them, heal your tanks and enable them. And that's what, it, what, that's what a true support does. Sure, you might frag out occasionally as a support, and particularly some supports like Zenyatta are prone to fragging out, they're meant to frag out, but your primary job as a healer is to enable others. And as DPS, make it easier for your healers, make it easier for your tanks. Don't try and do the solo mission. Don't try and carry everybody and then glow afterwards like, oh, I'm a sick DPS, I kill everybody. If you don't, if, you, if you're always on a flank, if you're always away from your team, how do you expect them to help you? How do you expect them to, to enable you to help you get kills? And when you do get kills that were helped by your team, where your tanks made space, where your healers healed you, acknowledge that. Because too often in Overwatch, I think the reason so many people are drawn to DPS, we seem to give all the credit to DPS when things go right. In reality, when Overwatch is played correctly, everybody enables everybody else. And it, even if it's the DPS on the kill feed, even if it's the DPS doing the bulk of the damage, which is what they're supposed to do, it's not because they carried, it's because their team allowed them, they made the space, they gave them the heals, they gave them the damage boost, they put them in a position to be able to do what their role is supposed to do. So that's all for this part of the video guys. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I know it was a bit rambly, but there's definitely some misconceptions which I wanted to try and clear up, specific to the roles. Uh, I did learn quite a bit just playing in the elo, and there's some general epiphanies that I came to and some realizations that I came to about Overwatch about why sometimes people find it hard to climb why certain heroes are actually easier to climb with to start with but harder to climb with later and how solo queue encourages certain bad habits like the DPS example but also more wider general examples now I'll get into that in the next part of this video but hopefully this part was helpful and if you guys enjoyed it please do like subscribe and share it really helps 
and I'll be back soon to finish off what I learned going from GM to Gold. See you guys next time.